Hello again, everyone. Dr. Dan Bachman here, and I'm going to give you a, a long overdue update here. I just looked back at my last uh, update on my situation. It looks like it's been about four months ago. A lot has happened since then. So, and I've seen, I, I apologize, I haven't got to all the comments because some of you have been saying, hey, what's going on? We're going through stuff too. I totally understand. Um, so, so here's, here's what happened. So, um, if we go back to November, I believe it was, of last year, November 2022, um, I had finally, finally recovered from my last surgery and I kind of got started going back to work. We did a scan and it showed that tumors had grown back. One in the liver, three in the lungs were still there. These were still there. We hadn't treated those. We hadn't removed them. There were just three spots. They're very small, like maybe a centimeter or something like that. Some even smaller. So then I had two subsequent scans every two months and each uh, the next two scans I had said no new growth. So I was kind of getting um, optimistic, I guess, would be the word. I mean, of course, I mean, this is good news. It's better than growth. It's better than spreading of the tumors. Then about three weeks ago, probably, I got another follow-up scan, which had been a three-month gap. The one spot in my liver doubled to about an inch. So still not huge. The previous ones I had removed from my liver were bigger than that, and there were six or seven of them. So one went from a half an inch to an inch. The ones, three spots in my lungs grew by about a millimeter each. So not what I wanted to hear. And I'll admit, it kind of took me down. It kind of took me down a bit. <laughs> Knocked down my kind of confidence, enthusiasm, um, and you know, each time this with this thing, with this diagnosis of cancer, you figure out pretty quickly. It's never a, you're in. There's never an you're in the clear moment. Uh, even if they see nothing, so no evidence of disease is the is the term or NED. That's the magic term we all want to hear. But even when that's the case, it doesn't mean okay. I beat that thing. I'm good for life. You still have to have periodic follow-ups because, um, you know, things come back sometimes. So, uh, obviously, I want to delay all of that stuff as long as possible. So, so with this new information, some things are growing. Um, it made me kind of, I mean, it took a while for me to kind of process and think about, well, okay, so what's my game plan here? What do I, what can I, what do I want to do differently? What can I do differently? What would be the best direction to send my energies um, as far as this goes? So I kind of, I didn't make a huge bunch of changes. I'm basically keto, keto diet, which is low carb. It's, a, it's quite an easy diet to follow. Um, my GI system likes it b way better than some of the high fiber vegan stuff I was doing. I was getting real bloated and having kind of miserable bathroom experiences. Keto is much better. Um, I have great energy levels. Um, I, I don't get bloated so I'm nice and flat. My tummy's flat uh, and less discomfort that comes with that. Um, and so, so I've pretty much stayed the same on the diet. What I did change though, is I started a, actually a patient of mine, share, several patients of mine shared me some research they found on the National Institutes of Health and the PubMed database, which is an archive of all the research that gets done, which is a lot. There are some very promising studies looking at antiparasitic drugs, as having an effect on cancer. And they're not sure, meaning shrinking or reducing spread, um, breaking up the tumors, interfering with their ability to grow or reproduce or spread. And they're not sure, with my reading, and I'm no, I'm no expert, I'm not an academic, so <laughs> these things are written in a language that I don't understand that well. However, what I gather is that um, it's early days in the, this kind of investigation of uh, antiparasitic meds and their effect on tumors. Um, however, it looks like uh, they're not sure whether it might be from parasites themselves, especially in the GI tract, um, that might be interrupting 
your, your normal digestive system in some way or damaging things. I, I don't know how that works. Could be the parasites, but they also said that, that certain bacteria and sometimes even viruses are found in the tumor mass and not just in the mass of the tumor itself, but in the individual cells of those tumors, which seems strange. And it also seems suspicious to me to hear that, like, well, hey, are these, if we see these uh, bacteria or viruses inside these cells, are they helping the tumor? <laughs> are they hurting the tumor? Um, so what they found, and, and I'm gonna do a really poor job here of summarizing this. What I'll do is in the description of this video below, I'll put a link to the protocol that I'm on, the meds and supplements that I'm taking for it, and, um, and some links to the research for that. So I want to be really clear. I'm not recommending this for anyone. I, all I'm doing right now is just sharing with you what I have decided to do. So I am no expert. I'm in no position to say, oh yes, this is the best treatment for you. And not at all. But in the interest of kind of sharing my experience and maybe sharing some research with you guys. So if you want to, hey, you want to track some of these things down, so you want to try them, that they are very safe. Um, I've been on this current anti-parasitic program, there, there's, two, there's two meds <laughs> that I may not even mention on this video just because I don't want to get the video flagged. Uh, well, one of them is finbendazole, which is a canine dewormer. I know, it sounds crazy. There's research on it. I'll share it below. I, I'm just repeating what the research says. The other one is the one that I can't say. <laughs> begins with an I. Um, but there's a, it's a, it's a, there's a calendar with a, like a 10-day course of this combo and then a little break where this combo and then a, I don't know 10 or 15 day course of the other so it's really well laid out um, this protocol gives you where to buy this stuff and and what doses for your body size and so on so it seems very well well thought through I'm about five six days maybe a week I'm almost a week into this program no side effects um, these things are very safe. Even if you accidentally overdose on these things, uh, the description there says oh, these are very safe for human consumption. We use them all, all the time for animals. But anyway, so without getting too deep into that, that's, that's kind of um, a big part of my approach. I'm also doing some rebounder stuff. So if you think of a little mini trampoline, you know, there's things you can kind of bounce on and jazzercise or whatever. So my mom actually bought one and it's, she's not living with me, but she, it's at my place. So um, I'm doing probably 10 to, well, I've done up to 40 minutes in a day. Just kind of bouncing on it. There's nothing special you got to do. You're just bouncing kind of, it's a real gentle thing, super low impact. Uh, I mean, as long as you don't fall off of it, it's super safe. Almost anyone can do it. And the idea is that, that that gentle up and down movement encourages lymph flow, lymphatic flow. So lymph, uh, if you think of our body as being <clears throat> built of cells, which we all know about cells, but they're really kind of like bricks in a wall, and there's gaps between them. And between each cell, um, there's little channels where um, this lymph fluid can flow, and it just kind of... It's not being pumped, like with the, our blood is pumped by a heart. Lymph, it just kind of gets squished around this way and that. Movement is what um, helps it circulate, and it carries nutrients to the cells. It also carries waste, by, like uh, metabolic waste, away from the cells. So it's kind of like a, a delivery system, uh, wastewater system <laughs> kind of setup that we've got going on. Now, if those lymph channels get closed off, Perhaps, it, it maybe if some scarring from, from either my surgeries or from radiation or from chemotherapy can scar those, or maybe just life, you know? Who knows? You know, whatever it was, if those channels get blocked, um, in, can, in theory, it can interf interfere with the, the body's ability to carry nutrients to the cells or take waste away. So there's been some research on that as well. It's super easy. It's, I mean, I've got it right there. So I'm just doing that too. It's free. Take. It's kind of fun. I use it while I watch TV. Uh, um, <clears throat> so, so that's what I'm doing. I'll leave some details down below. And 
uh, mentally, I'm in a really good place. Um, I, I wasn't so great there for, I, you know, I wasn't despondent or, you know, I mean, I definitely cried. <laughs> I definitely had my anxious moments, which each time you have these follow-ups, it, you, you can't not think about it. It's just there because <laughs> you're like, okay, what's, what's this one going to come back as? Um, but I'm getting used to that, um, that cycle. And then each time we get new information, you know, I have to deal with it, kind of work my right, mind around it. And then I'm happy and I feel like I've got a plan and I'm focused. So that's how I try to approach this is not just get stuck in that anxious, depressed, woe is me situation, which I can see how it'd be easy to do and just kind of give up. Not me. I got too many things to do. <laughs> I decided I, I've got way too many fun things and exciting things that I want to do. So I've just kind of decided that I'm going to be around for a long time. The only question is how, you know, what's going to be the breakthrough that gets me there? I don't know. And if I do live to be 90 or 100, could I tell you what it was that got me there? Probably not, because when we do a bunch of things, you, you never know, is it the mental part? Is it the meditation? Is it the extra sleep? Is it the filtered water? Is it the supplements? Is it the diet? Is it the exercise? Is it the rebounder? Or is it this, you know, antiparasitic problem? Don't know. So each could be contributing at different amounts. We don't know. So the uncertainty is just baked into the cake with this situation. Um, and, the longer you're in that situation, the more comfortable you get with being uncomfortable. <laughs> so like anything else, I guess, we get, we get better, we, we figure out ways to deal with it. So um, let's see, um, my diet has not changed my, oh, I was super iron deficient. That's the other thing. So this last, what, three weeks ago when I got this uh, round of scans, they also did blood work, found out my iron was super low. It was 17 was my iron count. And I think she said normal is two to 300, 200 to 300. So I was like, okay, well that would explain why I'm a little dizzy when I get up from sitting too long and why I'm like, I just don't feel the energy I have. So I'm feeling way better. I got three iron transfusions in a week. Uh, it's a bag. Ah, I think I put a, a short clip on, on my YouTube channel of me getting one of them. It's a bag. It looks like Coca-Cola in a bag, and they run it through my port here. So I've got a port that runs into my superior vena cava, I think, and uh, my heart. So they just poke it in there, pump it in. It takes an hour and a half each time. Um, and uh, feeling better since then. What else am I doing? Um, I'm walking more. Um, still going to the gym three days a week. Each workout is very short, maybe 15 to 30 minutes, three times a week. And I just hit some real basic muscle groups to stay, to keep my strength good. And then with the walking, that's where I get my, and probably the rebounding, I get some cardio work there. So those are the two kinds of exercise that I see is existing. There's strength, which is doing a few, heavy stuff a few times, and endurance, which is doing light stuff longer. So walking, swimming, biking, elliptical, rebounding. And then this would be, you know, either sprinting or lifting something heavy a few times. So we need both of those. I try to keep a nice, well-rounded movement program for myself. Um, and so, so exercise, my sleep has been improving. Um, no pain at night, M much, far fewer restroom trips. I was just having this kind of restless leg issue. Oh, I'm glad we're talking about this. So I was having this restless... Restless leg is the best I could describe it. My legs would jerk at night every 10 minutes and wake me up. So I couldn't fall asleep, couldn't stay asleep. It was just driving me crazy. Before, I had trouble because I was getting up you know, six, eight times a night to go to the bathroom. That's really dropped off. Before that, I had pain was waking me up because I had constant pain all night long. I had to sit, I had to sleep with my butt on a hot pack. That's all gone. And I was starting to wonder, my nutritional or uh, oncological nutritionist had prescribed for me two years ago before chemo. He said, take 20 milligrams of melatonin before bed each night. He said, it's not to sleep. He said, it may help you sleep. It's a cancer fighter. And that's a melatonin. I think that's a hormone. This is outside of my area of expertise. I think it's a hormone or it, it influences hormones in your body. 
I, I, I thought, you know, I wonder if the melatonin is keeping me from falling asleep or staying asleep. So I stopped it. Start sleeping way better, way better, which is a godsend. By the way, I found that my, that if I get good rest, all the other things improve. So I feel like good rest is, is up or there around the top of my pyramid of important things. I, I have to have this. All the other things can fall in below and all will improve. So I'm really trying to focus on my sleep. I'm getting some morning sun because there's a whole um, the, um, cycle where your, your body has, a, has an internal clock and morning sunlight sometime before 11, even just 10 minutes of sunlight in your eyes with no glass, no sunglasses. Um, and I also get some evening, and plus I'm out walking a lot during the day. So um, that's supposed to help your circadian rhythms and, and aid with sleep and let your body kind of keep track of what time it is, when it's sleepy time, when it's wake up time. Um, yeah, I know I'm forgetting a lot of things that I do. Um, I'm still avoiding all stressful movies, music, news. I haven't watched the news or listened to the news for seven, eight months now, and don't miss it at all. Every time I, I used to listen to NPR in the car, National Public Radio, I would find myself yelling at the radio, and I was like, okay, this is, this is no good. This is, not, this is not helping me. So I just cut it out. Instead, I listen to classical music, and I love it. I love it. I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. I mean, I still keep track of, like, headlines here and there on, through Twitter, but, but it's not like I'm, I'm not just engorging myself on all this, um, you know, all this inflammatory news that we have all the time now, it seems like. So let's see, we got an uh, update on tumor growth, diet, little dietary tweaks, I'm gonna do an antiparasitic program, which I'll include in the comments, or in the description below this video. Um, stress reduction tricks. Um, I think that may be it for now. Um, to all of you who follow my little story here, um, I'm very grateful for all of you. I, I feel bad that I don't have time to, to address, to answer all of your questions. I, I want to try to make some more time to do that. Maybe we'll just do a video sometime where I just go through questions. So if that sounds like a good plan, give me a thumbs up. Um, we can go down and look for common questions and address them in a, in a video clip. So I love you all. My thoughts and prayers are with all of you. Be strong. Just because you have this diagnosis does not mean, does not guarantee anything. There are no guarantees that bad things are going to happen. They can, obviously, but they're, they're certainly not guaranteed. And if they're not guaranteed, it means there are ways to pick your, yourself your way through this. And that's the mystery that we're all trying to solve right now. And I'll say, I'll say for me, it kind of feels right now like uh, if you watch American football, there's a two-minute warning that they stop play when there's two minutes left in the game just to kind of let everybody regroup and get their thoughts together because time is almost out. It kind of feels like the two-minute warning horn just went off. <laughs> um, and, and not that I feel like I'm going to die shortly. It's that it, it feels that way because it feels like to me, okay, we, I got to find a solution. I, I don't have to, infinite time to try different things. Uh, we got a little window, little window of time. During this time, I need to figure out something that gets me on the trend better and better. Um, otherwise, it could be two minutes ish, you know, in a, way, in a manner of speaking. So, um, and that to me, being in that, living in that two minute warning feels like, uh, sorry, building fire alarm likes to do that sometimes. Um, it feels like, um, well, it's hard to describe. It feels, well, each day is more precious. Each day is more precious. People are more precious. Things don't matter as much. It, it makes, it really lights a fire under me to, um, I've, been, I've been making some big progress on my self-treatment courses that are, I'll be sure and share with you guys as soon as they come out. But um, I would encourage you to try to look at it that way. Every morning is a blessing. I roll out of bed, there's that, that 
soft gold light just as the sun comes up and I hear the birds chirping out there. It just feels glorious. It, everything feels better, tastes better. Um, so I, I'm very grateful for every day I have. And I wish I had had that same gratitude in my whole life prior, you know, 50 years prior. Um, so it's an unexpected blessing from getting a diagnosis like this that it clears all the useless stuff out of the way and all that's left are things that really matter. And um, so in a weird way, I'm grateful for this experience. So much love to all of you. And, um, and whether you're religious or not, I'm not really religious, but I do pray. <laughs> I believe in speaking your, your, your thoughts and feelings and wishes out loud. Um, it's part of visualizing. You know, visual, visualization is, is part of the, it's part of that mysterious mix of things that has an effect on us that we don't really understand. So I like to say everything out loud. I do my affirmations every day. Um, but anyway, you are all in my thoughts and affirmations and prayers. So until next time, hopefully it won't be too long. I'll see you guys.